friends, today I'm gonna show you how to make a very interesting, fun and realistic DJ turntable cake. First, I made a template for the top of the cake. You can find it in the description to this video. When I traced it over rolled fondant, I left about 3 quarters of an inch extra for each side. I did it because it's hard to predict an exact size of the cake. It always easier to cut out an axis later than to deal with the problem of redoing the entire panel. To make a slip mat, roll fondant about one quarter of an inch and use six inches cake board as a template. Exacto knife works the best for this purpose. Dip it in cornstarch occasionally to prevent fondant from sticking to the knife, then taper the edge. Using tip number 5, create middle circle of strobe dots. Then with tip number 2, make two more circles of strobe dots from each side of the middle circle. By the way, I enclosed a picture with all the terminology for DJ turntable. It was a whole new word for me, but it was so good to learn what's the correct names for all the details we make for this cake. Without start button and speed select buttons according to the template. For power switch, cut out a 1 inch circle and create a texture to the side of the button by slightly pressing the fondant with an X-Acto knife blade. To make an ARM adapter, cut out the circle 1.5 inches in diameter from your fondant panel. Roll the circle out a little bit and attach it to the same place. It is a great way to create a neat and sharp indentation. Then make a semicircle of the same diameter for the top part of the adapter. Use the same technique to create a pitch control. the most complicated part of the turntable. First, make a circle indentation on a panel. Then cut out three circles, one and three quarters of an inch, one and a half inches and one inch in diameter and sandwich them together.
For Tone ARM, roll grey fondant very thin and fold it over the wire. Bend the wire before hand, creating a desired shape. To make fondant sticky, use a little bit of water. Then cut out the excess fondant and smooth out the seam. For me, the best way to smooth the seam was to gently roll the piece. It took me a while to figure out how to simplify all the parts attached to the tone ARM, so it will not be too overwhelming and difficult to make, but still be a recognizable piece. is done, it's time to make a counterweight. For counterweight, use three fondant pieces, one thick grey circle, one thinner black circle and one black semisphere. I decided to shape a semisphere slightly, so the top part of counterweight wouldn't be perfectly round, but it's just a personal preference. To make a head shell, cut out a fondant piece by using your template and flatten the end followed by the stylus. Then you can add additional details to this piece by using a Dresden tool. But it looks great even without these details. By the way, when you attach a head shell, do not cut a little piece of wire sticking out, it will be a stylus. Then make a piece for a pitch control. I believe it's the only no-name detail on the scheme I attached to the video. Please let me know in the comments below if you know how it's called. For stylus illuminator, make a fairly thick oval shaped detail and top it with a little circle. Tone ARM, stylus eliminator, center spindle, parts of counterweight and pitch control with silver petal dust mixed with a little bit of alcohol or lemon extract. Then make a writing on top of the sleep mat and on pitch control with white food coloring. I didn't add any alcohol or lemon extract and use the food coloring as it is, because it will become a little bit translucent over black fondant anyway. When your writing is dry, you might need to write on top of it again, just to brighten it up a little bit more. For the size of the cake, the best way is to use a panel method. Roll 4 panels of fondant and cut the edges with a big kitchen knife. Then apply each panel to the chilled cake. Cut the excess of fondant with sharp X-Acto knife blade. I use a new blade for each cake because they get dull very easily.
After that, smooth the panels out using a fondant smoothers, paying a lot of attention to the corners. I like to use two fondant smoothers for this purpose. After all the sides are covered, apply the top part. I let it dry for a day, because personally I like to make difficult time-consuming details beforehand, but it's just a personal choice. Then, with a wooden knife for clay art, I smooth the edges to eliminate the visibility of the seams and to smooth rough edges after cutting the turntable base. The best material to use for this cake is modern chocolate. The seams can be smoothed out perfectly and become invisible. It's much easier to cut the excess of chocolate more than fondant and fix any mistakes too. As a final step, use a slightly damp paper towel to remove fondant pieces and cornstarch. If you have a steamer, don't hesitate to use it for shine and perfect look of the cake. That's it! Thank you for watching this tutorial! I hope you found it useful and inspiring! Please leave me comments below, thumbs up and subscribe! See you next time! Bye!